welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about some important Windows developments. Specifically, I'm going to detail what we currently know about Windows 10 updates beyond October 2025, as well as the growing support for ARM processors and the increasing focus on AI. So let's go and get started. Windows 10 reaches end of life on October the 24th, 2025. And indeed, if you're currently running Windows 10 and your PC doesn't meet the requirements to run Windows 11, you've probably already had this screen pop up with a prompt to visit this page, which notes that after 14 October 2025, Microsoft will no longer provide security updates or technical support for Windows 10. Your PC will still work, but we recommend moving to Windows 11. However, what this page doesn't immediately tell us is that there will be an extended security update or ESU program for Windows 10, just as there was for Windows 7. But this time, it'll be possible not just for enterprise users, but also individuals and organizations of all sizes to extend the use of Windows 10 devices past the end of support date, as they will be able to receive critical and important security updates through an annual subscription service. The only prerequisite is that users must be running the latest and last version of Windows 10, namely version 22H2. Microsoft also points out that ESUs will not include new features. So all you'll get is security updates, which to be honest, are the only kind of updates that most people ever wanted in the first place. So the question is, what will an extended security update cost? Well, it appears there'll be different prices for educational, commercial, and home users. And right now, Microsoft has only announced ESU pricing for two of these groups. Starting with education, the cost of extended support updates will be $1 per license for the first year, $2 for the following year, and $4 for the third year. So, for $7, Anybody with an educational Windows license will be able to obtain Windows 10 security updates until October 2028, which I think is a pretty fair deal. Meanwhile, as Microsoft details on this page, for commercial users, the price will also double every consecutive year for a maximum of three years, but with the base price starting at $61 a device for the first year. So, this means that three years of commercial ESUs will cost $427. However, Windows 10 devices used to access Windows 11 Cloud PCs will get Windows 10 extended security updates for free. And those managing business PCs via the cloud solutions Microsoft Intune or Microsoft AutoPatch will get a 25% discount, paying $45 per device in year one and $315 for three years. So, the difference between education and commercial ESU prices is dramatic and clearly a marketing and public relations matter rather than an indication of cost price. So, what about the cost of Windows 10 extended security updates for home users? Well, if we return to the page that Microsoft points home users to, and we scroll down and open up what is the Windows 10 Extended Security Updates program, we get an acknowledgement that the ESU program exists, along with a statement that final pricing and enrollment conditions will be made available closer to the October 2025 date for end of support. Or, in other words, Microsoft does not currently want to tell us what it'll charge private individuals for extended Windows 10 security updates. Now, again, this is presumably a marketing issue, as Microsoft would rather inform its customers that they need to buy a new PC, either directly from Microsoft or from a third-party vendor from whom Microsoft will probably earn a commission. So, whether the home user ESU price will be close to the low fee being offered to education users or the extortionate one being charged to commercial customers, we simply do not know. But my own hunch is that the cost will be closer to the education fee, as Microsoft does not want loads of bad publicity from forcing loads of perfectly decent home PCs into landfill. 
and so my guess is that it will try to defuse the situation by charging home users a few dollars for extended security updates. Although I doubt it will reveal this until mid-2025. And of course, as I've covered in other videos, it's possible to update most older PCs to Windows 11 even if Microsoft deems them to be unsupported. And migrating to other operating systems like Linux or Chrome OS is also a viable option for most hardware. Or you could even take the risk and run Windows 10 with no security updates, although personally this is not something I would recommend. Right, let's move on to the increasing support we're seeing for running Windows on a computer with an ARM rather than an x86 CPU. Microsoft first had a major attempt to run Windows on ARM hardware with its Surface RT tablets launched back in 2012 and which were not a great success. But in 2019 Microsoft tried again with its Surface Pro X tablet with a Qualcomm S1 ARM processor. More recent Surface tablets with SQ2 and SQ3 ARM processors have followed. And indeed on this channel we've experimented running the ARM version of Windows 11 on both Raspberry Pi 4 and Orange Pi 5 single board computers. In 2023 Microsoft even launched a desktop ARM development kit called Project Volterra. And if you want to see this in action there's a great review on the Nova Spirit Tech YouTube channel which I'll link to in the video description. Most recently, on May 20th, 2024, Microsoft announced a new computer category called Copilot Plus PCs. Here, the hardware requirement is for 16 gigabytes or more of DDR5 RAM, at least a 256 gigabyte SSD or universal flash storage drive, and a processor that includes a neural processing unit capable of at least 40 trillion operations per second. As this indicates, and as we'll discuss in the next part of the video, Copilot Plus PCs are intended to provide access to the most advanced artificial intelligence models. However, when they go on sale on June the 18th, 2024, all of the first wave of Copilot Plus PCs will have an ARM rather than an x86 processor. And so this is a big moment for Windows on ARM. Specifically, all of the initial Copilot Plus PCs will have a Snapdragon ARM64 processor from Qualcomm. And this will include new laptops and tablets from Microsoft, Acer, Dell, Asus, HP, Lenovo and Samsung. So we're talking about quite a range of new ARM Windows devices. Depending on the model, inside this new ARM hardware lies either a Snapdragon X Elite 12 core CPU that comes in three slightly different versions or a 10 core Snapdragon X Plus. Performance for the X Elite range is supposed to be similar to an Apple M3 and to beat or compare favorably to many X86 CPUs. Energy efficiency is also excellent and is claimed to result in tablets and laptops with a battery life of between 13 and 26 hours. When it comes to software, Windows and ARM devices can run either native ARM applications or x86 and x86-64 Windows applications via emulation. Although for the best performance and energy efficiency, native ARM Windows applications are required. And with the launch of Copilot Plus hardware, we're going to have more native ARM Windows applications available than ever before. These will include not just native ARM versions of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneDrive, OneNote and Teams, but also native ARM64 versions of the Chrome Web Browser, DaVinci Resolve, the Affinity Suite, Blender, Zoom, Spotify and WhatsApp. In addition, Adobe now have ARM Windows versions of Photoshop and Lightroom, with Premiere and Illustrator joining the lineup sometime in June 2024. Right now, all mainstream computers running ARM Windows are expensive tablets and laptops. But with support for ARM Windows software clearly growing, I would expect to see desktop computers that can run Windows on an ARM processor to come to market in the next few years, and this will include price competitive mini PCs. 
Indeed, in an interview with Reuters in June 2024, ARM CEO Rene Haas stated that ARM's market share in Windows, I think truly in the next five years, it could be better than 50%. And in the past few weeks, low-cost motherboards with embedded ARM processors, like this Radza 5 ITX, have also started to arrive. And whilst this particular board has no official ARM Windows image available, it does suggest that self-builders may fairly soon be putting together their own ARM Windows computers. As noted earlier, all Copilot Plus PCs include a powerful MPU for running advanced AI models. Indeed, as Microsoft states, Copilot Plus PCs will enable you to do things you can't on any other PC. Specifically, the new Windows 11 recall function is intended to help us remember things we've done on our computer that we may have forgotten. Or, as Microsoft state, with Recall, they are setting out to solve one of the most frustrating problems we encounter daily, finding something we know we have seen before on our PC. Today, we must remember what file folder it was stored in, what website it was on, or scroll through hundreds of emails trying to find it. When activated, Windows Recall runs in the background, taking snapshots every few seconds to monitor everything that happens on the computer. These snapshots are then used to create a personal semantic index that is stored locally on the device and which can be searched by describing things using natural language. Microsoft claims that the semantic index is private and secure as it's not uploaded to the cloud and is encrypted. And Windows Recall will not capture anything viewed in a private browser window. Now, personally, I struggle to identify with the problem that Microsoft are trying to solve here because I don't have a problem finding things on my own computers because I keep everything nicely organized. And I can always get back to things I found on the web, normally because I've kept a bookmark or stored my link in a document. If I haven't, I can use standard web search tools to go back to somewhere on the web and it just works. So I don't want re Windows recall on any of my systems. I don't want anything like it in any operating system. I'd like to keep the operating system nice and dumb over here and I will use AI when needed over there. I can see AI's got potentially valuable application, but I don't want it integrated into the operating system. That to me just seems to be completely unnecessary. And it's potentially creating a massive set of problems in the future, because I can't imagine if hundreds of millions of people have got this turned on and it's turned off by default, but it's turned on in, in Windows during the setup process. So lots of people will turn it on accidentally, I'm sure, because Microsoft will try and make them do that. They will make them do that. That means hundreds of millions of people will be running Windows Recall and having everything they do being monitored, semantically analyzed, stored on a local device, incredibly valuable information. And if you've got all this incredibly valuable information, someone will want access at some point, whether it is Microsoft or other companies and they find ways to um, convince you to give them access to it or people hack it, it just doesn't seem sensible. So for me, this is a bridge too far. As I said, an operating system's got certain functions. One of those functions, as far as I'm concerned, is not to monitor me and to track me and to build a model of my activity so it can throw it back at me in the future. Anyway, you may have a different view. If so, please let us all know down in the comment section. What do you think of this trend to integrate AI into Windows? But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.